We begin with this simple circuit for the forward voltage VDD applied across diode D through a resistor R. We already know techniques for analyzing this circuit. We can use the exponential voltage current relationship for the diode to solve for the voltage VD and current ID, or we can make an approximation and arrive at an approximate answer much more quickly using the constant forward voltage drop model. Using that model, we would redraw the circuit, replacing the forward conducting diode D by a constant 0.7 volt drop. We can then solve for the current ID, simply recognizing that it's the voltage across that resistor divided by the value of the resistance R. So why was this approximate analysis simpler? Well, it's because by replacing the diode with a constant forward voltage drop, the resulting circuit becomes linear, and we have many techniques for fast and easy linear circuit analysis. You can get an even quicker, easier uh, result using the ideal diode model, where we simply assume it's a short circuit when forward conducting. So next, we're going to develop a technique that has more accuracy but yet still preserves this property that we end up with a linear circuit analysis and can therefore take advantage of all our numerical linear techniques, including fast computation using computer software. The technique is applicable when we consider the situation shown here, where the voltage VDD undergoes a small change, delta VDD. As indicated, the current ID also changes by an increment delta ID, and the diode voltage VD changes by an increment delta VD. When this happens, let's say we want to find a quick way to determine the values of these incremental changes. Toward that end, we develop a small signal model for the diode. Here, the word signal emphasizes that in general, delta VDD can be a time varying quantity, and the qualifier small indicates that this diode model applies only when the increments are kept sufficiently small. We'll have to quantify how sufficient uh, is defined shortly. Using this notation, we can think of the incremental quantities delta VDD, delta ID, and delta VD as the small signals. And the analysis to find these incremental quality, uh, quantities will be called small signal analysis. The, the key to small signal analysis is to model all the nonlinear components by linearize them around an operating point. We'll call this the bias point, and we'll often use the symbol Q to denote it. So for a diode, we know that it has an exponential voltage current relationship as pictured on the right. But if we consider its behavior around a bias point, and in particular, if we consider only small incremental changes in voltage and current around that operating point, we can approximate the IV relationship of the diode with a straight line that passes through the point Q and is tangent to the exponential curve. Key to the analysis, therefore, is to find the slope of the curve evaluated at the bias point Q. In this case, the bias point Q can be determined by an analysis where delta VDD, delta ID, and delta VD are equal to zero. Setting those variables, those small signal quantities, to zero will result in the simple circuit that we started with, and we can apply all the usual techniques for solving it. To perform the small signal analysis, we'll need the slope of this IV relationship evaluated at the bias point Q. So remembering that the IV relationship is an exponential, IS e to the VD over VT. Again, evaluated at Q. We can take that der derivative pretty straightforwardly. 
we end up with is over vt e to the vp over vt evaluated again at q and at the bias point q we know that the diode voltage vd is given by uppercase vd so we end up with an expression like this Now you'll note the numerator here is nothing more than the uppercase ID, that is the diode current evaluated at the bias point Q. So the slope of the tangent at Q is given by this relatively simple expression. You'll notice that this expression has units of one over ohms. That makes sense because it's a proportionality constant between voltage and current. So we can think of that quantity as a conductance or one over a resistance, which we would call a small signal resistance, RD, having units of ohms. That small signal resistance, RD, relates the incremental quantities, ID, and VD. So the premise is that the diode operates nominally at this bias point Q, but that for relatively small incremental changes in diode voltage VD, which are plotted here versus time, we wiggle back and forth along the diode IV characteristic, resulting in incremental changes in drain current as plotted here versus time. And that as long as the changes remain restricted within a relatively narrow range, then we can use the blue line tangent to the curve as an approximate relationship. And just a word about notation here because it can get confusing. So in general, we're going to try to stick to the convention where we use lowercase variables for the symbols i and v, and uppercase symbols for the subscripts. In this case, for the diode voltage, we'll use subscript D. And the combination of lowercase and uppercase indicates that the symbol is representing the complete quantity, whether it's voltage or current. That is, it's the superposition of the bias point Q and incremental changes around it. Then we will have separate symbols to identify the bias point, all uppercase, and the incremental or so-called small signal quantities will be denoted with all lowercase symbols. So in general, the total value is the superposition of these two. These all lowercase symbols for the small signals are in effect replacing the incremental quantities that we defined earlier, delta VD, delta ID, and so on. Uh, going forward, we'll start using the lowercase notation more and more. Similarly, you'll notice that we used the all lowercase Rd to represent the incremental or small signal resistance that relates the small signal quantities Vd and Id. This is therefore thought of as a small signal resistance. It's worth remembering that this is not a real resistance in the physical sense. It's just an sort of constant of proportionality that relates the small signal quantities VD and ID. But it can be useful to sometimes think of it as a resistance so that we can draw an equivalent circuit that relates only the small signal quantities and solve that circuit to find them. So in summary, when solving for a complete circuit like the one shown on the right, when the circuit's operation 
is centered around a bias point and uh, but but is subject to small variations around that operating point we can decompose the analysis into one where there are no incremental changes we simply solving for the bias point q the superposition of that plus a small signal analysis where we solve only for the incremental quantities. You'll notice in the top picture, delta VDD is equal to zero. And so is replaced by a short circuit. And the resulting schematic can be solved using techniques like constant voltage drop model or more accurately using the exponential model for the diode. So in this picture, we still have to take into account the diodes nonlinear nature. But in the bottom, we've now eliminated the sort of large signal operating point quantity, BDD, that accounts for the bias point because we've already captured that in the analysis of the circuit on the top. Um, so we set it to zero, that is we replace it with a short circuit, and we replace the uh, diode with its small signal equivalent resistance. RD. And we may recall that RD is related to the slope of the IV characteristic, and it's actually given by VT over ID, where ID is the bias current that we solved for in the first part. So again, this small signal schematic is somewhat of a fiction. It's just a picture that's used to represent all the small signal quantities. We've called them delta ID, but we can also use the lowercase notation to remind us that these are small signal quantities. And the schematic just represents the sort of linear relationship between all these quantities in schematic form that then allows us to solve for whatever circuit quantities we may be interested in using all the usual tools of linear circuit analysis, nodal equations, mesh equations, and so on. So again, in summary, we solve for such circuits by first performing an analysis to find the bias point Q, then linearizing the circuit around that bias point, replacing the linear components with a linear circuit model, and then performing a linear circuit analysis of the resulting small signal equivalent schematic. Finally, we can superimpose the small signal results on top of the bias point Q to get the complete solution again. This general approach to circuit analysis where there are small variations around a bias point is something that we'll come back to again and again. We're using it here with diodes for the first time because diodes are the first nonlinear circuit element we're confronting, but it's very useful and important tool for analyzing transistor circuits.